Okay. There we are. Elise, um, welcome back for the second part two of part two of our mental health series. So five of six sessions. So we're thrilled to have you back again tonight on really looking at values and thinking about how we're making decisions during this COVID time period. I am so happy to be here. I love working with Tara and with the Junior League. And, you know, as I said two weeks ago, Tara and I could not have envisioned back in May when we did the last bunch of these series that we'd be doing this again, but here we are. <laughs> so, so we will just, we will embrace it. Um, yeah, and today I'm going to be talking about uh, values, which is something that we talk a lot about uh, in cognitive behavioral therapy um, and specifically how we can use our values now to help us navigate some of the stuff that's been coming up you know, as, as COVID has been you know, droning on. Um, a little bit about me, you would know all of this um, from the last talk, I'm a clinical psychologist based in Summit, I specialize in CBT, I'm an author of a book called Mom Brain, which is actually out May 9th, not May 23rd, there's been some confusion, but it is May 9th, um, and I am the mom of two boys who are six and nine, although almost seven and 10, frighteningly, um, and this is just a little bit about my background and training. Okay, so let me start off by talking a little bit about what values are. And by the way, I hope all of you who are watching have um, the values worksheet that was emailed to you because I'm gonna have you guys do some work on that um, in, a, in a few moments. So uh, if you don't have it, make sure you, you get it handy. Um, so uh, there, if you're familiar at all with CBT, you may know that there are a couple of other evidence-based treatments that are sort of offshoots of CBT that we use a lot of. Um, one of which is called dialectical behavior therapy, one of which is called ACT or acceptance and commitment therapy that may ring a bell for some people. Um, values are a really big part of ACT, of acceptance and commitment therapy. And uh, ACT was uh, created by a psychologist named Dr. Steve Hayes, and he describes values in ACT as chosen life directions, right? Um, and essentially, he's, he talks about them as sort of like guides for um, making decisions and choices in a, in a bunch of different areas of our lives, right? Work, family, um, you know, recreation and leisure, like you name it. Um, and, and values are sort of like guiding principles. Um, I always talk about how values are different from goals because goals are specific, right? So goals are... Um, you know, setting a time and a place and a date for something, whereas values are much more general. So like to use a very classic example, you may say, I value fitness and staying healthy. And as a result, I set a goal of exercising three times a week or something like that, right? So goals are designed to be very specific and based on what your values are. And what we're gonna do after actually we articulate our values a little bit is we're gonna talk through goals and have you guys do some goal setting and maybe even share uh, if, you, if you're willing and brave. Okay. Um, values has always been a big part of uh, CBT and then, you know, and ACT work um, as sort of like the, the yin to mindfulness is yang or vice versa, right? We, we've talked a lot in previous, um, in these previous sessions about mindfulness, right? About sort of accepting where you are um, emotionally, accepting where you are in life, right? And not judging yourself. Values are sort of like uh, the, the change oriented piece of treatment, right? So just as we are accepting our circumstances and we're accepting our emotions, we're also thinking about, well, what can we change? Where can we take action? And that's where values come into play, right? They guide our action. We really need to think about our values now during this time, because thanks to COVID, as we talked about a little bit two weeks ago, we are limited, right? In terms of our time, our physical energy, our emotional energy, our finances, like we are limited in the resources that we have. And so values are really helpful in helping us to determine how we allocate our limited resources, right? What do we choose to attend to? What do we not, right? What do we say yes to? What do we say no to? This is where values can really come in handy. Okay, so I'm gonna describe and then have you guys spend a couple minutes filling out the values worksheet that you were sent. Um, and I'll kind of walk you through what it is and what you should be thinking about. And then, as I said, I'm going to give everybody a few minutes just to complete it. Um, the goal of the values worksheet, again, is to, is to articulate your values in a number of different domains. The ones that I included in this one are relationship with partner, parenting, if you're a parent, work and career, health and self-care, and recreation, leisure, and passions, right? So there's kind of two main objectives of this worksheet. The first thing you wanna do is for each sort of value domain, like relationship with partners say, um, you wanna circle any of the listed kind of one or two word values 
that really um, that really speak to who you want to be as a partner and who you want your relationship, you know, how you want your relationship to be, right? Then in the second section, right, you want to identify uh, the values-based statements that match the values that you've articulated above. So these are sentences. I mean, again, you're seeing them on your worksheet. These are sentences that kind of expand upon the values that you identified in the previous section. Um, a couple notes for how to do this effectively. The first thing I would do is take your time with it. You don't have to rush it. We've, we've got time. I built in time for everyone to, to be thoughtful about it. Um, number two, if you find that you have a lot of values in a given area, like maybe you look at parenting and you're like, I would circle every one of these, try to circle just your top three or four values in each of the domains. Because if you circle all of them and then set out to set goals around these values, you'll feel very, very intimidated. And the truth is, right, we all have to prioritize. And we've talked about this in previous talks too, right? We all have to prioritize what values are, are really most important to us, right? You know, we may have lots that are important to us, but which are the most important? So I really want you to try to narrow it down in each section to three or four, if you can. And the same thing with those values-based statements. Um, so that is, a, a, I, I think by way of explanation, what I want to give everyone, but I will, you know what, I'm going to, if, if you don't mind, Tara, I'm going to close this down just to see, just to get back to the, oops. I want to just get back to the chat to see, first of all, if anyone has any questions. Um, does anybody have any questions about that before I send you off to do a little values-based work? Feel free to throw things in the chat. I'm not seeing anything, so I'm assuming all is good. Everyone good? Oh, I let Tara, you're muted. I see you're trying to talk, but you're muted. Oh, you don't have the sheet, Victoria. Okay. Tara, can you um, yeah. get it to her? Yeah, of course. Okay, great. Hopefully everybody else Sorry, has give me it. One second. It's also in the um, in the Zoom link that Jen sent. Okay, so let me just, I'll go there. Don't worry about sending. I'll, I'm, I'm on the computer so I can look for it. Okay, let us know if you have a problem and then we'll, okay. we'll make sure you get it. Okay. okay, anyone else have any, let's make sure. Okay, that's just Victoria. Anybody else have any questions about how to do it? And as, as you're going through, by the way, feel free to, pop you know some things in the chat as you're uh, filling it out I'll ask you too by the way when you're done just put in the chat done <laughs> so I know kind of what everybody's timing is you know usually back in the day when I would do workshops uh, in person I'd be able to see when people looked up from their uh, writing but of course now I can't so uh, take your time but do put in the chat when you're done and as I said if you have any questions feel free to you know reach out so Elise, are we doing all of these or just the first group? I'm really Do all of them. Okay. Go through all of them. Mm -hmm. Right. So, and, and again, you know, if, if it, if time seems to be an issue, like we can at a certain point, I'll stop us, but I think we've got time hopefully to get through all of them. Continue. Um, and like I said, this is something that you can go back and, and revisit. Um, okay, let's see. So let me share with you guys the screen. There we go. Okay. All right. Here we are. Okay. So to Tara's question, what do we do with these things? <laughs> right? Um, so one thing we'll, we'll do, but I may kind of finish the talk and then we can go back to it, um, is we can, again, use our values to inform specific goals that we have, right? Um, and, and what I think is so critical about that, particularly during the COVID era, I mean, you, you guys, if you've attended previous talks I've done for the Junior League, I mean, you've heard me say many, many times over that it's really, really important to set goals where you can and control what you can control, right? During a time when much is out of our control. And I think values are great for setting these goals, setting these achievable goals that you can put into practice now that will help you, as I said, like, you know, feel a sense of control and accomplishment during a time where that's very difficult to come by. Um, values can also inform our decisions about parenting, about relationships, about work. I mean, I'll use kind of a classic example, but certainly one that I've talked to many patients about, um, the question of whether to ramp up at work or not, right? So depending on what you value, it might make sense to say, accept, um, you know, a, a more rigorous position at work, or it may not make sense, right? To use an example that's classic because it happens often, right? 
there will be people who say, you know what, I really value career advancement, right? That's really important to me. I've worked really hard for this. And because I'm prioritizing this value, I'm going to make the choice to take this new role, right? Whereas you might have someone else who says, you know, what I actually value about work and my job right now is flexibility. I really like that I can kind of come and go as I please or go on and off the screen as I please. Um, and I like being able to be there sort of for my family when they need me. I think the value that I hold most strongly is flexibility, right? So of course that person is gonna probably make a choice to stay where they are, right? Um, and I have a lot of things to say about values and you know, work-life balance and such, but I'll, I'll, hold, I'll hold that and you can, you can tell me if you have any questions about it. Um, but, but the values can really guide your decisions. Um, and I wanna talk specifically about two ways that values, uh, specific ways that values can inform decisions um, and thinking. One is dealing with comparison making, which you guys have heard me talk about many times before. And another is specifically dealing with COVID. So I'm going to go through and talk about those. And then what I'm going to do is kind of go back and have you guys, as I said, like articulate one value or one goal rather per value and hopefully have everybody share too, whoever's comfortable. Okay, so let me start by talking about comparison making. If you've been to my previous talks, you'll know that I have said a lot about comparison making um, and how problematic it is and how, how much it drives anxiety and shame and guilt and anger and envy and you name it, right? Um, and I think, and I, I won't go into that in detail now because I've, I've you know, talked about it uh, ad nauseum, but I, I will remind you that you know, values and comparison making, or rather comparison making, can sort of work upward comparison and downward comparison, meaning like you can compare yourself to somebody who you think is above you and feel envy. You can compare yourself to someone who you feel is below you and, um, and feel you know, like you're judging them, like, oh my gosh, I can't believe what they're doing. And of course, similarly, you could be the target of envy and judgment of somebody else. Um, and social media, of course, is the major culprit for this. I don't need to tell you guys that, right? It, it, it just drives comparison making you know, in a profound way. Um, we've talked about how to deal with this in past talks, but I felt like I would be remiss if I didn't mention that now that you've got your values articulated, you can use your values to help you deal with comparison making in a very specific way. So I'll give an example. Um, I worked with someone who was always complaining about her older sister who had like older children. Um, and, and she would say, gosh, like she's always judging me and comparing my situation to hers and telling me that I should be doing this with my kid and I should be doing that and she did this and why am I not doing this and so on and so forth. And, you know, it was really, I just, it gets me so upset and then I feel so guilty and, and, and I feel like I should be doing all these things she's telling me to do, right? This is like, I've heard this from more than one person, some, some variety. Um, a really important question to ask if you find yourself in a situation like this is, okay, well, what are your values and what are your sisters? Do you think you guys share values? Like, do you val have the similar values surrounding parenting? Do you have similar values surrounding, you know, how you want your household to run? And nine times out of 10, the person I'm working with will be like, no, actually, um, we're very different. Like my sister and I value completely different things. You know, I, I'm all about schedules and routines and her house is all about, you know, one big party. And, and frankly, like, I think my nephews are kind of brats and I don't want my kids to turn out like her kids. Right. And then I'll say, okay, well then why are you making comparisons to, to her? Why are you letting her judgments get to you? Because the messenger, I would say consider the messenger, the messenger of, of, of these judgments is not someone whose values you share, right? So you're gonna make different decisions and choices. And what's gonna work for her based on her set of values is not gonna work for you based on yours. And so again, I don't wanna beat comparisons to death, but I did wanna mention that now that you have a sense of values, you can really use these when you're identifying sort of how you stack up relative to other people. Okay. The next thing I want to talk about, and I suspect that uh, we may have some questions and discussions around this, is values and COVID decision making. So perhaps the most popular topic of conversation I've had with patients throughout this whole you know, year of this has been about people in their lives making different decisions around COVID stuff than they are, right? So this is family members, this is friends. Um, people have talked so much and so often about this issue. And of course, you know, what's happening with COVID is that we're forced to make decisions basically every day, right? 
um, about things such as, do I let grandparents visit? Should I go back to the office? Should I enroll my kid in baseball? Do I let my kid go outside and play with that kid who's not wearing a mask, but my kid is desperate to get out, right? And so on and so forth. Like these decisions are coming up every day. And of course, what's so difficult is that we don't have hard and fast rules to guide our decision-making, right? Back in March, and I would argue even, you know, when I was doing the talks, you know, back in, in May and June, so much was decided for us because everything was shut down, right? Like we couldn't go to the gym. We couldn't, you know, do X, Y, or Z because so much was closed off to us. But really since I, I feel like this summer, we've had some leeway, right? Uh, things have opened up again and we've been tasked with determining whether or not we want to do a million different things, right? And, and have our families do a million different things. Um, and again, without hard and fast rules with just guidelines, it's very difficult to know what to do. Um, and as, as I'm sure you guys have, have experienced in your own personal life, like everybody interprets the guidelines in a different way, right? Everybody hears Dr. Fauci a little bit differently. Um, so there aren't hard and fast rules that we can follow. A result of which is that I think we need to lean on our values when we're trying to make these calls. Because again, what I value differs from what somebody else values and my values may dictate different choices. I'll give you actually a, a very personal example of something that absolutely happened to me last summer. Um, so as you guys know, many summer camps were closed last summer, um, which was you know, terrible for a lot of people. My son's day camp happened to be open. Um, and it was a camp we'd sent my older son to before and we trusted them implicitly. They had like a really good COVID protocol in place. Um, but nevertheless, we had a decision to make, right? Do we send our kids or not? Now, it will probably not surprise you guys to hear that I value mental health <laughs> very highly. Um, mental health is obviously very important to me um, and to my husband too. And towards the end of uh, the last school year, so right about June, my kids started having a really hard time. I mean, not surprisingly, I think at that point, every kid started to, to melt down a little bit, right? But my kids were having a really hard time in June and I was thinking about, okay, well, what happens if we're home all summer? And like, this is their summer experience, right? So I thought, all right, well, the decision that makes the most sense to me for their mental health is to send them to camp. Of course, the decision that makes the most sense for their physical health is not to send them, right? Because there, of course, there was a physical, there was a risk to, to everybody's health. Um, so I went back and forth and really thought through all of the physical risks, you know, what the camp was telling us in terms of safety precautions, the fact that at that time, actually COVID cases, as you guys know, were, were lower in New Jersey. Um, and I thought a lot about my value of mental health and the fact that I knew that if my kids went to camp and had some normalcy and some social interaction and some schedule and routine, they would do a lot better mental health wise. And so I decided to send my kids, right? I just decided, you know what? I, I value mental health and I am going to use that value to inform my decision. I will say I had a number of friends who send their kids to the same day camp I send my kids to who chose not to send them, who were like, no way, <laughs> you know, we don't know. I mean, still back in the summer, right? We still didn't really know too much um, about how this was working and, and all of that. So a number of my friends said, said no, they weren't gonna do it. And my decisions were not wrong or right, nor were my friends' decisions, right? We were all making values-based calls. And I was able to sleep at night because I was like, you know what, this is consistent with the things that I value, right? And again, once I, I evaluated the physical risks and didn't find them to be particularly compelling, I said, yeah, I'm gonna lean on this, this value. And, and other people made different choices. But again, I think it's a really good illustration of how using values can really help you to make these tough decisions. Um, one of the things I'm hearing a, a lot about uh, from patients now is actually this coming summer and what the plans are and will we be traveling and will we be traveling with family and what will we be doing? And I think it will be really important for everybody to really consider their values when they're making these decisions too, right? So I, I'm working with somebody now who said, you know, my sister is really into socializing and, you know, has really missed being among people and being with family. And so she is renting a beach house down the shore and she wants us all to come and stay for an entire week. Um, and my patient said, you know what? I, ugh, I don't feel great about this. Like I'm kind of on the cautious end with COVID exposure. I'm just not ready for this. I don't value socialization in the way that she does. I don't feel great about this. So we talked about, okay, well, what, what can you do uh, to communicate or how can you properly communicate this to your sister, right? That 
while you understand that this is consistent with her values and, and it's great that she's doing this, it doesn't feel consistent with yours, right? Um, and she was so worried you know, she's going to devastate her sister. And I said, you know, prepare what you're going to say, right? And make it non-negotiable, right? Say, you know what, like, we've made this decision. We're not going to stay a week. I said, you know, maybe if you feel comfortable, you'll compromise and you'll say, we'll go down for the day, right? Or something like that. Um, but rehearse ahead of time and think ahead of time about what you want to say and how you want to, um, how you want it to freeze it so that the person knows this is a non-negotiable and this is the way that I want to handle things. Um, you know, and, and I'm hearing about this a lot too with peers. So for those of you who have kids, um, different families just having different, you know, guidelines for what they feel comfortable with their kids doing and not doing, right? And, and coming against that. And so that's another example in which I think you can really uh, fall back on your values and think about, all right, I'm not the family, I'm this family, right? And, and what do my values dictate that I should do? So that's values and COVID decisions. Um, and I, as I said, I think values are important always, but particularly important right now because we have limited resources and we have to make all these calls, right? All these decisions that are tough to make and, and not black and white, you know, in, in, in any way, shape or form. Okay, so now that we've talked through that, I actually want you to go back. Well, actually, before we do that, I'll just see if anyone has any questions. Um, and if you don't, um, I'm gonna have you guys go back and do some goal setting work. Uh, but so let me close my screen for a minute and the show. So I can see the questions. Does anybody have any questions? I see three things in the chat, but those might've been just people saying they were done. Okay, yep. Anyone have any questions thus far? I think the only question that I would raise right now is sometimes it feels like values in different areas bump up against each other. Mm -hmm. And so I would love for you to talk a little bit about what do we do when values bump up, up against each other in ourselves? much less our partners, our families, et cetera, but in our own selves when there's conflicting values or competing values, I suppose yep. I should say. That's a great question. And actually you beat me to the punch because that was gonna be something I was gonna address. <laughs> so I'm gonna do it now. Great. Yes, and this, this actually often happens, right? So, I, I mean, I think work and personal life is, is probably the clearest example of this, right? Where you might find, all right, well, yeah, I, I really value advancement at work, but in my personal life, I really value being able to, you know, like indulge my hobbies, right? Or, or be there for my, my, my kids or, you know, whatever. This happens all the time. Um, and I think there's no easy answer to that. I think, you know, what I will often talk to patients about, and as I said, it's usually in the career like realm that I have these conversations. Um, what I'll often talk about is just, you know, okay, if, if you feel like these values are butting heads, you got to take a step back and, and ask yourself, which is more important, right? Which is not to say they aren't both important, right? But oftentimes you have to make choices. Like, you know, one of the things that has always driven me so crazy is this notion of a work-life balance, right? And this idea, oh, and particularly, you know, geared towards women, right? This idea that women, you can have it all, you can balance work and life. I think that is ridiculous. I think it's not possible, especially now, <laughs> but even before COVID. Um, and so what that means is that you really have to ask yourself, all right, well, I've got these values for my personal life. I've got these values for my work. Like, what do I way more heavily, right? And then recognize that it's going to be a trade-off and recognize that, you know, you are ultimately going to lose something, right? So I'll, I'll, two separate examples of this, right? One example might be someone who says, you know, I really, I want to make partner in my firm, right? And I have a one-year-old at home, right? Oh, of course, I value being home with my child to watch them grow and develop and I really value making partner, right? I really, I want this to be something that's in my experience. At which point you've got to say, well, like which at this moment, because values do change and priorities change, but which at this moment do you prioritize? And there is nothing wrong with being like, you know what, I want to make partner. So I'm going to prioritize this, right? And of course the trade-off of that is that maybe you, you know, your kid is, is in daycare or, or with a nanny and maybe you can't be around as much, right? And of course the opposite is true as well. You may say, you know what? I value being there for my kid and I value making partner, but I think what's more important to me right now is being there for my kid. And then you make that choice, right? Again, what I talk to um, 
female patients about all the time is that their trade-offs have to be made, right? And priorities have to be set. Um, and there's no, again, there's no right or wrong here, right? And there's, there's no correct answer. It, it just, it's important to go in with the knowledge that something's gonna be sacrificed, that you can't do it all, right? And can't sort of be all things to all people. I mean, whenever possible, I tell people like, try to compromise. Like for example, if you value, um, I mean, you know, crafting, say, as some people do, but like, or like, oh, I'm so busy in COVID, like I can't do my knitting or I can't whatever, then you can start to get creative and say, okay, well, like, can you fit it in, you know, in the morning, right before work? Can you fit it in right before you go to bed, right? You can try to get creative to honor as many, as many values rather as you can at one time, right? But you ultimately can't honor them all. Now, again, values can change and perspectives can change. So, I mean, I can speak to myself as, as a career example, where like when my kids were very small, I worked very part-time. Um, and as they got older, I was able to transition to working more full-time, right? Which, which kind of worked as they've gotten older, um, but it's been a shift for me um, in, in what I'm prioritizing, right? So I think, I, I think you know, you wanna think about that too, that, that, you know, the values that you're adhering to now aren't necessarily gonna be those that you're adhering to, you know, five years from now, say. Did that answer your question, Tara? Yeah, it sure did. Yep. Okay, great. So the last uh, piece of this before um, I, I, you know, open for questions. And by the way, you can ask about values or you can ask about anything else that we've talked about thus far. Anxiety topics, stress topics, COVID topics. Um, what I want you to do though, and I'll give you a couple of minutes to do this too, is for any of the values that you uh, you know, noted down, circled and, and, and uh, noted down the values-based statements, I want you just to set one values-based goal. So if you filled out, you know, parenting and, um, you know, recreation and leisure, just pick one goal for each of those domains. And um, what I'll recommend that you do with these goals is make them as specific as possible and as achievable as possible. Um, because, you know, for example, if you, you know, if you value spending time with your kids and you're like, you know, my goal is to take my kids to a different national park, you know, every weekend, <laughs> like it's not gonna happen, right? So you really want to pick things that are specific and you really want to pick things that are, are doable in the here and now in, in, you know, in the COVID era. So I'll give you guys a couple moments to do that. And I'll ask you to do the same thing as you did before, like put in the chat when you're done. Um, and that way I'll know when everybody's finished. And if anyone has any questions, don't hesitate to, to yell out and ask. Um, only if you want to, <laughs> does anybody want to share um, one of the, their value, the values-based statement and the goal that they set? You don't have to. Don't I'll start. Only if you motivated. I'll sure, thanks, Victoria. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. So, mm -hmm. so I selected um, health and self care, and the the value is fitness, and then the sample based statement, I value moving my body in some capacity on a regular basis, and then my value based goal is I plan to continue to exercise six days a week. Perfect. And the reason that that goal is good is because it's specific, right? Right. And I'm sure Victoria, you know, in your own mind, what that exercise is going to be. Right. But if oh, you, okay. but if you didn't, yeah, if you didn't, if say you, you were, you hadn't been exercising and you decide, you know, I want to start exercising twice a week and, and you kind of don't know where to begin, think about it, right. And pick something that's very specific. So I'm going to, you know, go on the Peloton app twice a week, or I'm going to take a run twice a week or something like that. Um, one of the things that we talk about in CBT all the time relating to goals is that the more specific the goal, the better, right? The more likely that it's going to get put into, into action. Anybody else want to share? Again, I'll no share. Sure. Uh, oh, is Hazel, okay. I said Hazel was talking because I didn't want to talk over her. Um, so I also picked health and self-care and I, one of my values based statements is that I regularly, I value regularly practicing mindfulness and yoga. And every day currently I do either meditation or yin yoga and it has helped me incredibly, but I do like, 
I do find myself doing one or the other. And, and so I think I'm gonna, I, 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 after like really thinking about it, I think I can make time. I mean, meditation, I take 10 minutes. Yoga, I take 20 minutes. I can do both, you know? <laughs> like, yeah. So mm -hmm. um, that's my goal. Yeah, that's great. And, and that's the, the purpose of, of doing this kind of exercise is precisely that, right? Is like taking the time to think about, okay, like what's important to me, right? And, and how feasible is it, right? So I know I value this. And now let me be thoughtful about like, well, you know, maybe I can incorporate this even more, right? Or, or for some people, maybe I haven't been incorporating this and, and now I can think of ways that I can do so. So that's, that's great. That's exactly, you know, exactly what we want to hear from something like this. Anybody else want to share? Sure, I'll share. Um, one of my values was role modeling uh, for parenting, sorry. Mm -hmm. um, and the value-based statement was, I value engaging in fun activities with my kids. And so my goal was to have us as a family have more time unplugging from devices to engage in some non-technical, non-device related activity um, together as a family, at least like one night or one weekend day, just so that we can connect with each other um, without our devices and without technology. I love that. I think that's a great goal for everybody <laughs> right now, for sure. And what I'd say too, Hazel, is when you think more about it, like think through, okay, like what night is it going to be, right? So pick the specific night and tell the rest of your family, this is our, you know, screens free night and maybe get them involved in picking what you're going to do, right? The more specific you can be, the better, right? To ensure that it happens. So maybe you pick, you know, Thursday night is screens free night. And I'm going to tell my family about it. And we're all going to talk about, you know, the, the day or two before what we want to do for that screen free Thursday night. Um, and then it really puts it into practice, right? Because it's so specific. Yeah, these are great. And this is exactly what you want to be doing again for all of these domains, right? Is, is to figure out, all right, well, if these are things that I value, you know, what are some goals that I can enact to help me? And like I said, I think particularly during this time, it's really, it's a really helpful and useful exercise. Um, I guess I'll stop now to uh, to ask if anyone has any questions, um, which like I said before, I'm happy to answer not just about values specifically, but also about anything, you know, anxiety and COVID related. Um, and you can put them in the chat if you want, or you can just speak up. I have a point that I'd like to raise. I, it's not really a question. It, it just goes back to what you were speaking about or the example that you spoke about regarding the um, I guess the client who was invited by her sister to go down the shore to spend a week. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm pretty COVID conservative myself. And, and so I am planning, uh, my, my middle daughter's graduating college in May. And so rather than have everyone come to Jersey, she's in school in DC. So we're renting an Airbnb and we're going to do sort of the, the, the same thing. But then what I did, same thing in terms of family party, small gathering, but what I indicated to my family is that not everyone will be vaccinated at that time. So we will still, and even if we were, you know, we, um, what I'm planning is that we're, you know, still going to mask and social distance and, and, you know, air circulation, windows open and all of that. So we're following all of those safety protocols. Um, <clears throat> most everyone was okay and comfortable with what my plan is except for one family member who said that they would not be coming because they don't social distance or mask. So, <laughs> so, okay. I, I wasn't really expecting that. I thought, oh, I have work or I have whatever, you know, but I wasn't expecting that. That's not what he, I, I didn't know that he didn't do that, but okay. Not, um, no judgment, just, okay. It is what it is. So my daughter is disappointed because, you know, she knows how we all are. Um, you know, with that. So, you know, not having one of her uncles there because of, you know, for that reason. So again, it's, it's just, everybody has their own views, opinions. Um, you know, again, not judging, but just not, you know, that, that, that's just me. So, um, right. We're just disappointed. Which but is I think, <laughs> yeah, and you did something that, that I, I, you know, like I was saying before that I think is really smart, which is just setting expectations ahead of time and talking to people ahead of time. Right. Because then 
you know, at least then it, it isn't as if like, you know, your, your, you know, that your, her uncle shows up and he won't social distance. And then you're like, uh oh, like, what are we going to do here? Right. I think it's really important to do exactly what you did, which is say, Hey, like, again, based on your values, like this is what I'm comfortable with. Um, and it's unfortunate that he couldn't come around to that. Right. Because goodness, it's not that hard to mask and social distance. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think you handled it as, as well as can be expected. And, and the way that I've been telling people they handle these kinds of situations, right? It's just like, again, figure out what your values are around this issue, figure out what you're comfortable with and then communicate it, right? Communicate it and, you know, people can take it or leave it. And, and people do sometimes leave it. I mean, your story, Victoria, is, is not, um, you know, I, I've heard several stories uh, from patients recently similar to this, right? Um, of, you know, I actually, you know, I've heard stories about like, like, like stuff going on with like Passover and Easter now with some people who want to do it on Zoom and some people who want to be in person and people are yelling. I mean, it's like, it's a whole thing. And, and again, I think that's where you've got to rely on your own values to make the choices that work for you, you know, and work for your family. That's a, That was a great example. Any, any other questions? either in the chat or again, you can speak. I have, a, I have a question comment. I, I'm kind of experiencing almost the inverse of that where I feel like um, any, any, like there, there's where you talk about, you know, different people's um, values, they bump against each other. Um, when you're trying to be in a, you know, like especially cause I have kids, you're trying to let your kids be involved with other kids, but you know <laughs> what the other people in that pod in that situation are doing, and um, it get, that gets really hard. Um, the, not, I mean, I don't know. It, it's it's hard to like now that we're like starting to really immerse ourselves more into everyday goings on. Um, it's really hard to, to like trust that everyone's doing what they're, you know, what they're supposed yeah. to be doing. Um, yeah. so that, that's, that's been my challenge, um, is just, I'm trying to let my kids do more and I'm having a hard time trusting and I look out the, right now. I'm not even in summit. I'm, <laughs> I'm on Long Beach Island away from everyone. But it's hard to trust that people are doing, you know, I'm letting my kids out there and people are doing what they're supposed to be doing. Yeah. I mean, this too has been an issue like this whole time. And one of the kind of common themes um, in, in my work with patients this whole time, because it is so hard, right? And because I, I'm sure you all have examples similar to Rachel's, I certainly do, where, you know, you know that someone is not doing what they're saying they're doing, you know, in terms of, of being careful, in terms of, you know, this, this has happened to me certainly, and, and I think has happened to so many people I work with. Um, and it, it's tough, right? I think at the end of the day, this sort of comes down to values too. I mean, it, it's reminding me actually of when I sent my sons to camp, right? And I was thinking about the counselors because my niece is 19 and was a summer day camp counselor last year. And I was like, I know what she's doing. And um, <laughs> I'm gonna assume that some of the counselors at their camp are doing this too. And that's probably not what the camp wants, right? Like my niece was, she was socializing, right? She was out and about. Um, and you know, at the end of the day, I think I was so, I, I decided that uh, my kids' mental health, which like I said, was hanging precariously in the balance <laughs> before camp, was important enough that I would sort of just have to ab abandon myself to this and trust. I don't know if I'm trusting the teenagers or the universe or, you know, something, Um but knowing fully that I couldn't control these other people. And I think at the end of the day, like that's an important principle as well, right? To know that you can only control yourself, right? And you can't control the decisions of other people and you don't know that people are being forthcoming. I, you know, I, I, I've just found, that I've been in so many situations, both personally and like, you know, I've heard from patients where like, people are fabricating things or exaggerating things or what, I mean, it's, it, it, it's, an, it's an issue for sure. So I, I think at the end of the day, 
you've got to make your call. Like maybe you decide, okay, I want my kids out there and playing. Like it's time. They need to be out there and playing. You make your call. You do whatever you need to do safety wise to, to make that happen. Um, I, my older son has a friend he plays with every day. They play football. They play masked football every day. Um, and that's sort of how we've worked it out to feel a little bit safe with it. Um, so you take all precautions you can. And then I do think there's an element of just saying, all right, I'm, I'm going to, I got to put some trust in, as I said, I don't know, the universe or the other people or, you know, or whatever. Um, and because this decision is values consistent for me, but it's hard. It's really hard. I know we only have a minute left. Any last minute questions before I wrap it up? I hope this was helpful to you guys. I have never done an ex, sort of an experiential talk like this on Zoom. So <laughs> thank you for bearing with me because like I said, I'm used to doing stuff like this and then I'll kind of see when people are putting their pens up and their eyes are up and it's sort of hard to know what everybody's doing. So thank you all for for bearing with me and I hope it was was helpful. And, and like I said, if you didn't you know, complete the form, no problem. Like feel free to go back and complete it. If you have any questions, oh, let me put up my contact information on my last slide. If you have any questions for me, I will share this with you. Please don't hesitate to reach out. Um, I said, I'll put this up now so you can see it. This is just where you can find me. Here we go. This is where you can find me um, on, online everywhere. Um, and thank you guys so much for having me. And thank you, Tara. As always, this has been great. Thank you so much. This is an excellent presentation. I really appreciate it. I always think that kind of leading your life by being guided by your values is so key. It helps make decisions just helps make things a lot easier. And I really appreciate the, um, the activity that you had us go through to think through practical ways of driving our values in our, in our goal setting. So in, in two weeks, well, what is it? The 31st, I believe that we're going to be together Wednesday yes. the 31st for those for our post COVID talk. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So this is so great because we've gotten to the end of this and it's the first post COVID talk. So it's going to be about Reentry, um, because a lot of people are very excited slash terrified about reentering the world themselves, their families, etc. And so I'm going to talk about strategies uh, from exposure therapy that can help you kind of navigate that reentry effectively. So hopefully you'll all join us. Well, and I've heard a lot of people already say, "I know I need to go to that talk because it's just <laughs> yeah. already creating anxiety of thinking how we're going to go back into the world in a more." Um, I'll call it post COVID, but different right. next phase, next phase, I suppose. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So. Kind of like COVID, almost like the flu as something that's kind of around, but not quite as acutely terrifying. <laughs> right. And how do we manage that? Fingers crossed. Right. Yes. Yes. Thank you all so much. Thanks everybody. Good night. Good night, Thanks. everyone. Bye. Bye.